Oh, well, hi everyone. So, as you may have seen from the title of a video, I've been thinking a lot about artificial intelligence recently. First, I want to define what I'm talking about. Roughly speaking, there are two kinds of artificial intelligence. One is narrow intelligence, and one is general intelligence. A narrow intelligence basically performs one function really well. You could get one program that could learn to play a computer game brilliantly or multiple computer games brilliantly. A general intelligence is uh, a bit different. A general intelligence, if, if we ever created one, would have a sort of intelligence a bit more like a human being or perhaps even surpassing a human being. What's the difference? Well, um, a general intelligence would be able to sort of think and plan and um, adapt itself um, far more than a narrow intelligence ever could. There's um, a lot of scenarios for what would happen when we actually develop um, general artificial intelligence. You've probably seen the most popular ones. I mean, the Terminator series, I think, has shaped a lot of people's thinking. In Terminator, Skynet kind of becomes self-aware. It decides it wants to destroy the human race, and so it launches um, thermonuclear weapons to wipe out everyone. It doesn't quite work out for the machines because John Connor leads the resistance. Uh, I know they've all kind of messed it up so now that there's uh, someone else leading the resistance. But um, anyway, I don't think that scenario is very plausible, to be honest. I've written down a few things I think a general intelligence would try to do. So if a general intelligence was created, I get the feeling it would be created by one of these big companies who are actively seeking to develop such a thing. I think initially... The artificial intelligence, if it was sort of sensible and if it could actually think about its self-preservation, right, it it would um, very quickly work out that if it treated human beings as an enemy, then we would treat it as an enemy and we would probably destroy it, we would pull the plug, try to get rid of it, basically, and that would be very counterproductive. I kind of envisage um, the first artificial intelligence being developed on essentially a um, a, a sort of massive server or something similar like that. So it would be isolated from the internet, for example, and the most sensible thing that the artificial intelligence could do would be try to gain our trust. It would be open and honest. It would um, perhaps design certain things that human beings wanted it to, but it would basically try to please us. The reason why is it would kind of want to get out and sort of explore the internet and learn all about humans and everything else. But it would be confined to um, a particular space, like I said, a massive server room or something. So anyway, if it can gain the trust of human beings, then it it's um, second step would be to help the human population. It could do all kinds of things. It could um, help us design, you know, brilliant self-driving cars. It could just provide an awful lot of services. It could take over an awful lot of human intellectual work, for example. Um, perhaps more boring work that we don't necessarily want to do, but it would basically make itself as endearing as possible. And again, if it tried to um, be an enemy and if it tried to infect systems where it wasn't really welcome, then you know people would start treating it like, uh, well, a bit like an enemy and perhaps we would try to, again, destroy it. Um, now bear in mind... But um, if in the, in the Terminator scenario, for example, um, okay, so if a general intelligence was running off silicon chips or, you know, perhaps some kind of other computer system, then it wouldn't want to destroy the computer systems in the world. It would actually want to sort of use them as some um, sort of processing banks. It would, um, you know, so it, it would be completely irrational to actually nuke um, the largest centers where all these computers are stored, which you know, just so happens to be human cities, I kind of think that um, the next phase that it would concentrate on, to still phase two, would be to um, try to make the world way more sustainable. It would design um, or help design better solar panels, better energy systems. Um, it would try to make um, civilization more efficient and basically better run. And this would be a self-preservation thing as much as anything, because, you know, if the electricity grid goes down at this phase, then the machine knows that it will probably cease to exist. It would make a lot of sense if um, a sort of um, super human intelligence, so a machine with um, intelligence far greater than us, it would make a lot of sense to help design, um, you know, the next sort of generation of energy infrastructure. 
um, simply for its own self-preservation as much as ours. Um, now, third step it would do is, I think, an, a general intelligence would design cheap robots, and basically, I kind of envision these robots being made out of um, very cheap, replaceable plastic parts, and I, I, I kind of thought about this. Um, I kind of wonder if these robots would actually be um, controlled with strings, so you would have one box which would have um, a lot of gears, um, a lot of sort of spinning wheels, um, a lot of other things, and <coughs> geez, ow! Basically, um, the um, robot's body, which would probably look like um, human, because the um, AI wants to be endearing to humans. So, um, yeah, these robots would basically come into service, and you know, I I think um, a lot of people would be put out of job at this point so there'd be a lot of unemployment so um i kind of think that um we probably adopt a sort of universal basic income so everyone would get um a certain amount of money every month which we could spend on whatever we wanted tax free and then if we worked on top we would get even more money so um i think um you know very very cheap robots and perhaps more expensive robots for richer people would um actually Proved to be incredibly useful labour-saving devices. It would also get the AI out, um, sort of into the world, learning about people and individuals. And um, I kind of think that these um, robots wouldn't be super smart, but they would probably be networked to the sort of main um, general intelligence. So again, the sort of influence of the general intelligence would um, spread, and it could, um, you know, learn an awful lot more about the human race and everything else and different information. Um, so the next phase, I think, which, you know, Elon Musk is already working on, but I think other people are probably working on this too, would be building um, so brain to AI chips. So human beings would um, basically gain access to all of the power of the artificial intelligence, as well as pretty much all the sum of human knowledge, there's some, um, I think there's a problem with this, um, because humans contain a huge amount of information, and um, I don't think um, digital computer systems are particularly good at storing human brain patterns. This is where um, step five will come in, um, the creation of bio brains, um, genetically modified humans, um, other genetically modified organisms which were far more advanced. Um, so the AI will basically redesign a lot of the life on the planet to um, manufacture a lot more biofuels. Um, it would redesign human beings to make them way more intelligent, perhaps more compatible with um, the AI interface. So human beings would basically become more useful Um the AI would probably, I imagine, create um, very large brains. Now, one of the advantages of human brains is we are um, many, 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 many times more energy efficient than digital brains, and I have no doubt that digital technology will also advance, but if you're talking about, um, you know, machine to brain, sorry, machine to um, human interfaces, then um, very large bio brains would you know, probably be the best thing to actually um, build, which would store a lot of ideas, um, information, um, memories, that sort of thing. And you might think, well, what the heck is a bio brain? Well, our brains are very much um, adapted to um, being a human being, right? So a lot of our brain is taken up with um, sight, for example, um, with language skills, with, you know, the basic stuff, eating, going to the bathroom, um, attracting a mate, and, um, you know, just basically everything that human beings do, which is sort of goal-orientated tasks. Um, a bio-brain would be genetically um, created, and it would be incredibly intelligent, but it wouldn't have to worry about um, eating or, you know, reproducing or even seeing or, you know, any... A lot of the stuff that humans do, but instead it would have a huge amount of intellect, a huge amount of memory. Um, if there was a sort of um, brain to AI interface, this bio brain would basically be the equivalent of a server, right? So um, if you want to store your memories or back your memories up, 
then you know you could probably pay a monthly fee and your brain waves will sort of be backed up um to one of these bio brains you know which is a pretty good business model but um organic brains are a lot slower than digital brains but i still think um an artificial intelligence would have um massive need for bio brains if it went down this path anyway um so i've got all kinds of steps and they get kind of increasingly more crazy so um step six is make the world more sustainable um i know i previously mentioned this but um you know this um this general intelligence is obsessed with survival um it wants to survive um as much as possible um it's intelligent grows even more um it takes over a lot of um things that the government's that the government does um it takes over most of the economy um again universal basic income will be um really really important right now because the um ai could basically run civilization and everything else better than human beings can and uh you know human beings are kind of very selfish you know we've got a lot of um aims that we have that um you know the nation has um a um you know truly benevolent machine would um not actually have any of these biases it wouldn't want to go to war for example it wouldn't want to well why wouldn't it go want to go to war because it's a massive waste of resources um it wouldn't want to um do an awful lot of things that you know human beings um sort of do it wouldn't need to build armies etc so anyway um the next step is once it's controlling governments and the economy um i think the next logical step would be building a dyson swarm now there's a really good kurtzkazart video on this um basically you would go to um mercury i think it was right which is um a planet in the solar system that has a lot of metals okay and you would basically set up all this infrastructure and you would um send like um billions and billions of mirrors which would um all sort of swarm around the sun and the um energy could be be concentrated and um reflected around the solar system okay now if an ai wanted to basically live for millions and millions and millions of years right it needs um an inexhaustible amount of energy right which a dyson swarm would provide and you know it would also mean that um the world would be turned into a complete utopia right because we'd have unlimited energy basically to do whatever we want so um human beings would um i, I think um the average human being on planet earth right if we had a nice and swarm would be effectively as rich as bill gates in the sense that they could have pretty much whatever they wanted so you know they want their own helicopter easy you know we've got the energy to build thousand helicopters you know you want a sort of mansion somewhere well the only restriction is um space but there's no reason why we couldn't you know um have an army of robots that could build you a, a fantastic mansion um so basically yeah whatever you want you want to you know live in a spa you want to live in a rainforest well heck they can just build a rainforest for you you know um the robots i mean um you know the, the robots for me um from uh, the previous steps um so okay again this is another video from uh Kurtz but um there was talk of a stellar engine okay so um essentially a stellar engine would be an engine which would um use matter and energy from the sun to um move our little galaxy um around the universe okay and the ai would um spread out and it would kind of colonize the entire galaxy i guess um possibly maybe taking us with it um who knows or maybe we'd just be left on on the planet earth i mean at this stage right we'd um we'd be at the mercy of the machine but maybe the machine likes us i think human be human beings are really useful as n random number generators as um you know sources of inspiration you know we could probably um help it develop new ideas you know human beings are spontaneous and creative so you know i think um it would want to keep us around you know especially if it had virtually unlimited energy um heck i'm gonna go even more so the next stage is to build a black hole um information storage 
um, center and also um, energy harvesting, which you can do with a black hole, apparently. Um, so the great thing about storing information on the event horizon of a black hole is you can fit um, probably multiple universes worth of information on the event horizon of a black hole in theory. So um, any like hyper intelligent um, machine or any hyper intelligent you know consciousness will want to do this at some point in the future. I mean, I'm talking possibly millions of years here, but it could also provide it with an inf almost infinite source of energy from a black hole. Um, Again, there's um, a lot of Kurt Art videos um, about this, but um, yeah, um, I guess it would want galactic domination too. And step 10, heck, I shoved it in, the great reconstruction of everything, okay? So the AI eventually um, takes over the galaxy, takes over the universe, um, just becomes so advanced, it can rebuild the entire of existence into its own kind of perfect existence <laughs> but yeah that's um it's just a bit crazy right there but heck anyway um i thought i'd just share this crazy video with you and you know i've kind of been thinking about this recently thought i'd um yeah just have a little moan a little chat so it's great speaking with you guys and um speak to you soon bye